Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Witness. Today, we're going to be taking a look through the quarry area, and it's a really, really cool area to explore. It's very different than a lot of uh, areas in the game, so with that, let's just get right on to it. There's actually two ways to enter into the quarry. Uh, the first one is this guy, which we've actually already seen when we were going through the Shadow Forest, you may recall that when we are activating these panels, after we activated this one, we had the option of either going upwards or downwards. And if we went upwards, we got more of the Shadow Forest puzzles. But if we go downwards, we actually get the first uh, area into the quarry, uh, and it takes us right to the sawmill area, which is really cool. Um, the biggest thing that you're going to see in this area, and we're going to talk about this stuff first before we talk really about the puzzles or anything else, is this is our main area for the creation of a, almost all of the buildings on the island. Um, so we're going to see this area right in here actually is uh, getting producing rocks and uh, concrete and everything else for us. Concrete factory. Uh, this area is cutting the wood down and a couple other things. We'll go over all of it soon. But let's uh, take a look into what it is actually doing. So you can see this area right here, it's clearly uh, from the forest, is used after they chopped down all of the logs. What they would do is they would take the wood and they would actually put it right on these uh, things right here. These then lift up so it actually rolls it all the way down. And then you just put it on the next one and it rolls other uh, logs roll all the way down here. And the last part of it is, at one point in time, this dam used to actually divert the water all the way down this way. You can see the rocks uh, going all the way down and the mud uh, that's dried up over time because the river actually used to go right through here. So after the logs drop down, they would actually just float all the way over to the sawmill directly. So this is a just perfect internal logic. That's why I love this game, is that it's making it so that when they're chopping down the trees, they don't have to walk all the way around or try and carry these hugely heavy uh, logs all the way. They can uh, use as little minimal, uh, minim as little manual labor as possible if I can speak. So after the logs float all the way down, then what happens is they would actually go through the cutting process and this area is pretty cool because it's actually a couple different things you can see that there's all of the stone that's right here along with uh the wood and everything else but there would have been different ways that they would have cut this wood depending on um what time period it was in we'll we'll talk a lot more about this later so don't uh, don't worry if it's not completely clear right now but uh the easiest one to show is actually right here so they would have actually taken the logs directly or taken the wood directly from here they can lift it right up and when they put it on this conveyor belt you can see that uh, we have just a regular piece of wood uh, right there that's been cut once and right here then the saws go at it and it cuts it into multiple pieces it refines those pieces and by the end it can actually make something that's fully consistent so you can see that this is the same wood that's used on uh, almost all of the planks uh, it's the same consistent height to everything else right there so that's what actually how they're making all of this wood cool thing is uh, you can see as well that this is actually also how they're doing the warping for all of the sheet metal sorry about that something fell somewhere i don't know what it was who knows but um, this is actually how you can warp the sheet metal too because these saws uh, that are cutting the cutting the wood can also cut the metal into smaller sizes and this thing can also actually uh, press the press the metal so it can make these warping structures uh, like these guys and uh, a lot of the other metal warping that's done is caused by this area as well which is pretty cool and the last thing that this area really does in terms of logistics is from these cranes right here, not only can you grab the wood from the forest, uh, which they would have done afterwards, but you can also then load the wood. Oops. You can also then load the wood uh, into something like a ship, which there's a dock for and everything else that could actually load the wood right, uh, right onto it, which is pretty cool. 
So that's the logistics just for how they're making wood and making metal uh, that they use in other parts of the island, how they're transporting it. They also make concrete directly from this as well. So they actually take uh, the block or um, the pieces of stone that they have and they grind everything up right in here. You can see uh, it grinds everything uh, to be able to produce. Um, you can produce concrete from it, everything else right there as well. So this is your main production factory for the entire island. So now that we've kind of got just that out of the way, that uh, this is an area that's clearly made for constructing the materials uh, to build the rest of the island, let's talk a little bit about what this area actually is means what why does why does it exist uh, here other than just for um, being able to get materials for the world and I think the best place to start with that is an audio quote and it's hiding around right here what is divine in man is elusive and impalpable and he is easily tempted to embody it in a concrete form a church a country a social system a leader so that he may realize it with less effort and serve it with more profit. Yet, the attempt to externalize the kingdom of heaven in a temporal shape must end in disaster. It cannot be created by charters or constitutions, nor established by arms. Those who seek for it alone will reach it together, and those who seek it in company will perish by themselves. Hugh Kingsmill, 1944. So that's a very interesting quote. Um, basically, to kind of summarize it, it's basically just saying that you can't follow one teaching or belief uh, and follow it to the word or the letter and expect to find that divine presence uh, that people are searching for. By just following other people, it, you can't find it. You can understand it, but you couldn't experience that feeling yourself. You have to be the person that finds it. You have to think about it, and you can't just put it into one shape or one idea. Uh, it's all embodying. It takes a little bit of everything uh, from what you or your opinions are, your thoughts, and that's what actually constructs it is everything being combined together which is pretty cool um so that's a really good starting point for this area and i want to show the other entrance to get in so you can go through the force area which we did but you can also come through this gated area and to do it you have to solve a blue problem which we've seen a gajillion of it's a pretty simple blue problem to solve realistically and you also have to solve a tetromino puzzle, uh, so what we found in the marsh. And this one's actually a pretty difficult one, to be honest. Um, so if you hadn't gone to the marsh, marsh first, you probably... It's pretty unlikely that you'll be able to solve that problem uh, beforehand. And so when you get in, you first thing you see is this building right here. And this is actually a really cool-looking building. I really like this one you can see that it's really made up of kind of three main things. So you've got the actual stone, um, and this is the same size stone that was used in the keep. Uh, it's also very similar sizing to uh, what you saw in the monastery. And also, uh, we haven't seen it yet, but the desert ruins also have a very, very similar um, stone structure on it. And from the look of it, it looks like this building used to be a church or a place of worship of some form, just from the outside of it. You can see kind of these arches, everything else. We'll see more in the inside uh, to show that as well. The second thing we see is this concrete style building that's actually built right inside of it, um, signifying that it came afterwards. And also, we saw that kind of concrete styling in the marsh and in the greenhouse, a couple other places as well. And that was usually in areas that were more scientifically focused, uh, more research orientated. Uh, and last but not least, we get the metal structures that we're seeing up here, which are the metal that was in the ship. Uh, also see it in a couple other places as well. So we've got a good combination of things that are making this building what it is. And to be able to get inside the building, you have to first uh, open this door. And what you see is a blue problem and um, it gives you a yellow line, but it's a green background on it, which is kind of cool. 
one thing I really like about this problem, it's a little hard to see from up here, but it's actually almost an identical problem to the first, uh, first problem at the first gate right here. Only difference is that now you actually have two entrances and two exits, as well as one missing white piece. And I find that's, I don't know if it's entirely intentional, but it's kind of cool that we're taking, uh, we're taking the stones away from this main bed, and now one of the white pieces is missing. And I think there's also a reason for having multiple entrances and exits too, which is symbolic kind of of uh, making those decisions, uh, making those choices. You can't have one thing set for you entirely. You have to kind of make that decision on your own, which is pretty cool. So when we get inside, you can see a little bit more of what's going on in here. So our first thing that we can actually activate, the only thing that we can activate at the start other than the doors, is this machine right here. And we see this symbol that we haven't seen before, and dots that we have seen before. And normally, you can't solve this problem any way that we've seen, because if you try and hit all of the dots, you physically just can't get to the exit. So you have to make a choice. You either go this way, or you go this way. And if we go this way, it puts it into this upright for I love the sound of that for some reason. <laughs> it's such a cool sound. But when you go up, you can start seeing these first problems. And these ones are all on this grayish black background. And they just deal with dots, and everything that we've seen with dots, or majority of the problems we've seen just with dots before, always give a yellow line. However, this one actually gives a white one when you solve it, so this one is really simple. You're canceling out the dot right here. So this whole symbol is basically about canceling out a mistake. So if I did, oops, if I, if I know how to do this, which apparently I don't anymore. Oh god, what am I doing? There we go. It cancels one out and it does that. Now you can't do more than one, so you can't do, um... It's harder to find ways that don't work than do work, I find, sometimes. Uh... What could I... Yeah. So I can't do this one because it'll cancel out one of them, but it won't cancel out both, so you can only ever have one mistake, in quotations, uh, in the problem at a time uh, for it to be able to cancel out. So once you solve all of these puzzles at the start, you're gonna get this panel activated oops, right over here. And this one, what it lets you do is raise up this platform right here. What's really neat about this though, is that as soon as you raise this platform, it automatically also triggers the other platform to start lowering. So you can never have both panels up at the same time. And I think that's indicative of the puzzle panels as well. You can only have it one way or the other. You can't fully solve this and have everything represented. You have to kind of pick and choose. You have to choose which one you want to have up and which one you want to have down. And you can see just more of the logistics for grinding it to the ground. All the, they get the stone all grounded up and then they uh, are able to pump it into the different forms that they need from it. So we go up through here, and we get into this little box that also has controls for um, these guys, so we can control either of them. The fun thing being, as soon as we do, it cancels out. You can see it turn to a black line, and so even up here, it cancels out those problems. And the next set of problems that we have is these guys right here. And so now we start using the colored dots from the greenhouse area along with this as well. So this symbol, if I did something like this, because there's a green and a red, it cancels it out and it'll choose that. The neat thing is, I was just kind of messing around with it, and it will sometimes always choose green and it will sometimes always choose the red one to be the one that goes away. So now that I've reset the game, it goes green. I think it's a reset that actually affects it, because whenever I turn off the game and turn it back on, that seems to switch whether it goes the green one is the one that's cancelled out, or the red one that's cancelled out. So it doesn't seem like there's a um, huge meaning for which one gets cancelled. Uh, it seems like it can be either. So you get these green and red problems all the way down and eventually you start getting more colors as well. You get the blue and cyan colors get added into it. 
And we'll talk about uh, that a little bit later when we start talking about some of the themes in this area. But basically, you solve all of those problems, and it gives you two other problems. This one, which we're not going to talk about today. Sorry, I know a lot of people want to. We will, I promise. Just not. Not right now. Uh, and then our last puzzle actually combines both things that we were talking about, so the dots and the greenhouse problems together with the quarry symbol, and that's what activates the first half of being able to get the laser. We'll uh, walk over to the laser a little bit later. So that's our first set of problems in this area. Neat thing being, keep in mind the colors that you're seeing there. So those colors that we saw in that area were red and green and blue and cyan. On this side, our first two opening problems are right here. So to be able to activate anything, uh, the lift, everything else, you have to activate these problems first. And we get a tetromino puzzle, which is not uh, all too difficult of one right there. And we also get a puzzle from the treehouse area. And I always forget how to do this one. So if I was smart, I probably would have not uh, waited and done this later. But I'm not that smart, so meh, what are you gonna do, right? Uh, I think if you go this way, and if you go this way, and yeah, there we go, geez. Uh, and what do I need? I just need to cut. There we go. And we get these ones right there, and it gives you a white line, so yellow and white. So that allows you to activate this panel right over here, which uh, is able to raise and lower this um, uh, piece of metal right here. And you can see it has that green coloring, which we've also seen. Um, it's very similar color to this guy. Uh, and that's usually indicative of a machine oriented problem. So. We get to our next set of panels, and these ones are all tetromino ones, which, again, were typically associated with the color yellow for the most part in there, and it's pretty simple. Basically, it works the same way as the quarry symbol in the other area, is you have to make something that uses some of them, but it has to cancel out one. So in this case, there's one that has four. Clearly, the grid is only three things, so that obviously has to be the one that we have to cancel out. And it goes through that. That allows you to access this panel right here, and you can actually then move this uh, this piece of metal so it slides over, which is needed to be able to continue solving it because this right here, um, I don't know the actual word for it, we'll, we'll just call them pistons because it looks like a piston, um, is blocking your way, so you actually have to move the uh, sheet of metal all the way to that other side to be able to get up. Then, once you do that, you can do this and it raises those pistons up so you can uh, walk through from then on, make it a little bit nicer. But our last uh, kind of area in this in terms of puzzles is these guys right here. So we're still using the puzzles from the um, from the treehouse area, only now we also get colors as well. So we're getting the green, the purple, and also the orange coloring, which we saw all of those colors in the treehouse. Notice that the green color here is not the same green color as the ones in the uh, concrete factory. It's actually a different color green. Um, you could also see this on the vases in the glass factory. There's two different types of green, uh, which are different, <laughs> shockingly enough. So once you solve this, uh, the only really cool thing I like about this one is that just like uh, the purple squares uh, can combine with purple suns to uh, fulfill the requirements, this actually would fulfill the requirement of the sun because it has another purple thing right here, but it doesn't fulfill the requirement of a quarry symbol because there's no actual error in it. So you have to actually, in this case, do three of them, the two combine together, and then the one is by itself, which allows it to be canceled out and the quarry symbol is able to do that. So they get more and more complex as you go along, which is kind of cool, and then it uh, starts combining it with the tetromino puzzles as well, and those are kind of your hardest ones where you're combining the sun shape, the tetrominoes, and the quarry symbol. 
to get you to, uh, once you light up this one, this is what lights up the second area uh, to be able to get you access to the laser. And last but not least, we get one more panel right here. This guy controls the... If I... Uh, let's do this one just to show it. And this guy controls this right here, so you can see that clearly uh, this is able to move all the way down so we can actually grab pieces of wood from over here and bring them all the way over here um, to be able to load it onto a ship. But there are no other purposes in terms of getting the laser to actually solving that panel, so you don't actually have to do it to uh, complete the game. But there is some cool stuff with it, we won't talk about it today. So that's your panels. And taken just kind of at face value, it seems like a really weird area because there's no real running theme through the puzzle panels. They all use white, but that's really the only... and they all have the quarry symbol, but there's no other real commonalities between them. Uh, and that's intentional. And so I said that you should recognize the areas, uh, the colors, uh, and we saw, so we have blue, we have yellow, we have white, uh, we have green, and we have red in, and uh, cyan in this as well. So we have all of those colors. And in this area, we have orange, we have purple, we have that brighter shade of green. And so all combined, we actually have every single color that's in, um, uh, that's used for line puzzles in the game, except for pink, um, which is kind of cool. And those are actually the main uh, eight colors that are in the glass factory as well. I don't know why I decided to do a little line here. That's not where the glass factory is, but <laughs> that's okay. Uh, but you're actually using all eight colors in this area. Another really cool thing about this area is that you're actually using every single symbol in the game as well, except for one that we uh, haven't seen or haven't talked about yet, and we will continue not to talk about it for a little bit of time. But we get the dots, we get um, the symbols, we get uh, the actual sun shapes. The only thing that you can consider we don't get is the sound dots, like the smaller ones and bigger ones. However, those are kind of encompassed by the dots as well, I find. So I, I feel like we've used all of the symbols in that area, and I think it's meant to uh, meant to be that way. So we've combined all of these colors, we've combined all of the symbols, and that's why we have this white color right here, is white is a combination of all colors, and it's pretty fitting to have white then as the main color of this whole area. So... What's actually happening, though? Uh, now that we've got, we've kind of figured out that it's using everything, why? Why is it using everything? And you can start seeing it right here. Um, I actually love this. This is a really cool effect. So you can see that these are all statues. They actually used to be all on these pedestals right here, but this one has been taken off or moved or fallen off, but I, I feel like it would be taken off and put right here. The second one's still in place. The third one is uh, this guy right here which is hiding here. And basically what you're seeing is a man that's going all the way from crouching, holding a bird, all the way up until he is fully standing with the bird at his shoulder. So it kind of looks, it's very religious symbolism. It seems that start, it's this person, really long, like row, long hair, kind of like a pilgrim type of person. And it fits really well for a church, but what's neat is that the area around it, the clean, uh, the clean rock uh, around it, because it didn't get hit by dust and debris and everything else for years and years and years, I'm sure, um, you start seeing these different shapes right in here. So the first one is the right here, which looks like a monkey or an ape. The second one, we get a guy that's crouching a little. You can see his background still right here. It has that kind of same monkey-ish shape. Next one is the guy that's almost standing, he's stepping right to it, and the last one has a guy that is fully upright. And for anyone that's basically seen any picture that shows evolution, this is actually that same picture. He actually uses this um, in Braid as well, uh, with the, an evolution picture uh, all the way up. So you go from ape all the way to man. So this religious symbolism is actually also showing 
uh, evolution, which is more tied to a blue style theme or a purple, uh, more so a blue style theme than it is a, um, a yellow kind of godly, uh, godliness by itself. So you're getting double meanings in a lot of these things. What's really neat about this as well is this staircase typically isn't lowered beforehand. It's raised, and the only way to lower it is by solving this problem right here, which has purple and yellow in it. Um, and when you see it, you have to physically make a staircase uh, to be able to solve the problem with that purple one on the bottom. And it cancels out and it solves it. But what's really neat and kind of cool about this is the bottom part of the staircase, which is yellow, is exactly what we were doing with these panels. These are predominantly would give us yellow uh, yellow lines when we solve dot problems, and that's all on the bottom. And what do we have as well? We have a piece of technology and another piece of technology which we've associated with purple. And on the top level, all we have are problems um, that are involved with the technology on it. We can actually control everything right there, so this top part is very, very... Um, very technologically based, where the bottom is still a lot more faith based on a lot of things, and I think that's uh, showing that separation pretty well, which is kind of cool. So that's kind of what you're seeing in the concrete factor. You're seeing a combination of religion along with a combination of um, scientific theory put right in it as well. And on the sawmill area, what we're seeing is those yellow problems, those tetromino problems as well, which were a symbol of, again, godliness or creation or anything uh, that you want to say that way. And, and on the top ones, we're using the same symbols that we were using uh, beforehand in the treehouse area, which is kind of the making, getting stuff all encompassing. Um, being able to combine technology along with nature uh, to be able to get our path through there and what we're seeing is when we combine nature and technology and with um, the godliness that's actually what's uh, allowing us to activate the panels right here so not only are we seeing in this area that separation between um, or not separation, but you're seeing a distinction between um, science and faith, and then we have to combine it to be able to get one ac half of the access point to the laser. We're also then seeing that combination of nature with technology, and when we combine both of those together, we're getting the second half of the laser. So we're really combining all four main themes, science, technology, uh, faith, and nature or faith is a bad word for it. Um, it's not a good word either, but we'll, we'll just call it God, godliness, uh, and uh, nature. Uh, and all four of those combined are what allows us to solve this problem. So it's really cool that we've combined all of these ideas, but this really isn't the full meaning of this area. We've got all this combination. And I think it's really represented by this problem well, is when you have either of these, uh, so each area activates half of this panel, uh, it closes, or it opens up part here. Normally when the panels close, the only thing you can access is just this right here. And if you solve it, it looks like it's a normal tetromino puzzle, but it doesn't fulfill the conditions of the quarry. So the only way you can actually solve this is by having both open. We make the one little square at the top, and the two one cancels out. And I think this ties directly with the quote as well, which was saying that basically if we follow anyone's way of doing things, we're not going to get that divine feeling. And so what have we been doing in this whole area? We've just been doing what the concepts that the game has been teaching us this entire time and we're using all of those concepts and we are combining them a little bit together and everything else but the quarry is all about removing stuff that's physically what a quarry does it takes something from a bigger hole and it splits it into smaller portions and it removes them that's exactly what's happening with the quarry symbol that we have which is removing stuff from the puzzles 
And I think that is what they're wanting us to interpret from this area as well, is that now that you have all of these ideas, now that you've been given all of these different views on how you can see life and these different perspectives on how just the world is created, now you have to make your decisions. You have to take stuff from this main area. You have to take a little bits of what you thought was, what you feel is right about godliness, a little bit about what you feel is right about looking at uh, the world as just nature, about technology, about all of these things. And when you combine all of these pieces together from what you think, then you can get your feeling of the divine. And whether that's, for some people, that might be, it might be predominantly more Christian culture, but, you know, maybe there's a little bit of nature thrown in there as well, or a little bit of uh, how humans have made technology as well in that. Or it might be almost all nature. Um, and that's really what this area is really showing, is that none of these areas by themselves are going to get you to that divine presence. You need to combine them, and it needs to be you that's doing that combination. Someone else can't just tell you, oh, okay, well, you need 30% faith and 20% nature and blah, 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 and then you're going to be able to figure out all of this divine stuff all by yourself. <laughs> you need to uh, do all of that yourself. And I think a really, really good environmental way of uh, showing that is right here. This is probably my favorite environmental puzzle in the whole game. Uh, and it's this right here, which is this, these eyes that are just staring right at you. And these eyes are caused by nature, but it's symbolic to, like, God basically looking down upon you. And you're in this whole area that's dealing with all this science and technology and everything else, that it's actually the metal of the beams that kind of frames it perfectly for you. And that whole combination is this whole combination of ideas is basically what's going to show you that divine presence what's allowing you to look into the presence of god is uh, all of these things combined and oh I, that just makes me that makes me happy how much uh, how much symbolism I, there is in it but i did realize in my haste of trying to get through everything that i did miss one very important thing i've uh, recorded this video far too many times and had some errors with the audio so please forgive me for this but uh talking back again about this uh, evolutionary path with this uh these statues you can also notice uh the last thing is that these last two where there should be statues there is nothing and we don't have any indication of uh, any statues that you can see that correspond to these that I've seen at least but uh, what's really neat is that if you angle yourself right here it's actually exactly in the right area is this now looks like you're an angel and that's coming right from you and the second one is you being a king and that ties directly to the or a king or a monarch of some form and that ties directly to the audio quote as well, that they're saying, well, if you follow just um, the state or if you follow a certain religion just by itself, you're not going to get that divine feeling. It has to be coming from you. So in these last ones, this, um, this evolutionary thing or this religion uh, all the way standing up, it's you that's actually causing yourself uh, to become that angel or to become that monarch that's basically guiding you. You have to be the person that's making that decision you are the guide of your own um of your own thought process to get that divine feeling sorry i missed that before but uh like i said i'm pretty sure that ties in very very directly with the whole theme of this area only other thing i want to show you because i didn't really point it out uh, before is if you look right here, there's actually a lot of different areas. Some look cooler than others. We might uh, take a look. But you can kind of see a face uh, right in here in this tree. Uh, it's a little hard to tell from this angle, actually. You can see it a little bit better uh, just from this angle, actually. Uh, the face right here, this would be the mouth, the nose. Uh, and this tree is really cool because there's actually a lot of faces that you can make in it. We'll uh, take a look at some down the road. Uh, we won't look at too many others uh, right now. But that is basically the quarry it's um like i said it's really an area about just combining all of these other ideas that you've seen all throughout the island and then taking that one step further and choosing the stuff about it uh, that you're liking to be able to 
to be able to make your own decisions and uh, to be able to get that divine feeling on your own. So that's the quarry. Uh, I would love to hear your opinions or your interpretations of this area. Like I said, it's a really, really cool area. It's very unique uh, in the way it combines all of these things together uh, and does things that way. But I would uh, be really, really curious to see what you guys think of it. And for our next episode, we're going to be going to the Desert Ruins. And this is a really neat area as well. Uh, this is kind of... We're starting to get to the end of the game now. Um, so this is our kind of last main... Our last main biome, uh, save for the... Save for the town, which uh, we'll talk about in an episode afterwards. But I'm really, really excited to uh, talk about this one. So that's what we're going to do next time. I hope you guys really enjoyed the episode. If you guys did, please smash that like button or subscribe if you want to see more. It's a huge, huge help. Again, I say it in all of these videos, but thank you guys so, so much for the support. It is mind-blowing, uh, honestly, how many people are <laughs> watching all of this stuff for a game that's just a little indie game. Um, that's just, oh, it blows my mind how, how much interest there is in this. So thank you guys so, so much for all of that. I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you next time in another episode of The Witness.